Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Cook With Me in my kitchen, Queen's Curry Kitchen. I am Nupur and I live in Queens, New York. My goal in life is to teach you nice, easy Indian recipes so you can make it in your kitchen, you can make it in your home and get lots of compliments from your friends and family. I hope you're staying safe. This is uh, almost at 30 days of being in a lockdown. So don't do anything crazy, stay at home and cook with me. Today the recipes that we're going to make are a green chutney, which I promised you many, many times. Hi Indira, welcome. Um, I promised you a green cilantro chutney, which we serve in restaurants. I'm going to do that right here. I'm also going to do a karai paneer dish, which is very popular, everybody loves it. If you're vegan, you can do the same thing with tofu. Um, I will also be doing a green moong dal tempering, which I have covered in another video as well, but you keep asking for more lentil videos, so I'm just trying to um, include that. And I am also going to do a bottle gourd recipe, which if you don't know what it looks like, this is what it looks like. It's like a squash kind of a vegetable. Um, I'm going to do a very simple recipe with that. No onion, no garlic, just easy peasy, okay? So what I'm going to do is I wanted to make the chutney first, but because my oil is already hot, I will get the paneer dish started and then we will jump back right to the chutney. Let me flip the camera for optimum advantage of viewership for my lovelies who spend time with me every day and join me here. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your love and support. <clears throat> Okay, so this is my wok. It's nice and hot. I had turned it off a little bit. I'll start adding the ingredients and I'm, then I'll familiarize you with what all we're doing. So in this recipe, we are going to start with... We are going to start with some onions. These are finely chopped. Now I'm going to do a very smart hack because I have to temper the lentils and I have to make the masala or the base for this gravy, I will actually saute the onions together and then I'm gonna lift off a little bit and add it to my tempering and the rest of it I will continue walk to make my paneer dish. Okay, so as always, recipes, a little cumin goes in there. Now the characteristic taste of this dish is a combination of cumin seeds, coriander seeds, and fennel seeds. And the way I accomplished that and made it easy for everybody is by creating this, the stir fry karai blend, and it's nothing but all these things, a tablespoon of chickpea flour that's already pre-mixed, so you don't have to mix anything, you don't have to measure anything, but if you can't order the spices just yet, which you should have by now, um, you can always make this blend at home with equal quantities of coriander seeds, fennel seeds, and cumin seeds to get that amazing restaurant style taste. So we are going to add all the onions right now, Nothing. I'll save maybe just a handful to add to my green chutney. I'll save just a handful. And um, this will saute and we will use this time to actually be more productive and make our chutney in the meantime. Also going in will be some ginger and garlic. We will be adding some bell peppers of all different colors, whatever you have. I also have some paneer that I've cubed up. I do not fry my paneer for this dish, but if you like fried paneer, then maybe that's what your family wants. You know, go for it. So this is gonna take its own sweet time. I might just add a little more oil <clears throat> to this. Also as a final garnish, we will be adding some onion petals because this really gives it that la last crunch to your paneer dish. And of course, all the way in the end, what we are going to add is some slivered ginger juliennes, okay? So this is the thing that gives it that absolute restaurant style presentation when you can bite into the ginger juliennes and the cilantro all together. It's really a great mouthfeel. Okay, so this is going to take a while. So we have to wait for it to saute and caramelize. So it's gonna take a while. In the meantime, we're going to jump right to our cilantro chutney recipe. I know I promised this a long time ago, but here I am. So this is what I have. Not cilantro, but the stems. You see these? These are the stems. And this is where the maximum flavor of cilantro is actually concentrated. 
So whenever you chop up your cilantro for your garnish or your vegetables and you're taking out the leafy part, always rinse and save the stems because you can put these in your broths, you can put them in your soups, you can put them in your chutneys and they will make the most flavorful um, liquids for you. So whether you're doing Thai dishes, like I'm going to teach a class this evening that's going to be a Thai curry class and I've saved some stems for that, okay? So this is from about three bunches of cilantro that I've saved all the stems. Everything just goes in a blender. It's just super duper easy. It's not rocket science. I think the toughest part is to know how to work your blender. <laughs> At least for me. Okay, also going into this is a little bit of ginger. This is ginger. I'm just gonna put it just like that. And some garlic cloves, so about four or five. I like it a little more garlicky and a little more sweet. If you like it spicy, put more of these green chilies. I'm only putting one because I'm just a wuss and I don't like heat. So I'm only putting one. I'm also keeping an eye on this as we're going along. Um, and then in goes all your cilantro, the stems. Pack it nicely. If you have a Vitamix, this takes like three seconds. I don't have a Vitamix anymore, but yeah, that's the dream machine. I will also tell you some variations that you can do once this chutney is made and it's in your fridge. I'll tell you what else you can do and how else you can use it. Okay, now the onions that I had reserved. I usually don't put onions in my cilantro chutney, but now because we are all in a situation where we're trying to amp up our immunity, honey, we need the onions, we need the garlic. Don't be shy. If you don't have it, it's a different story. If you have it, please use it. To this is also going, I'm also going to put a little bit of jaggery. So this is actually a lump of unprocessed sugar. And basically when sugar cane juice is crystallized and formed into a ball, this is what it looks like. So it's not exactly brown sugar, but this is like the Indian raw sugar version. And I'm not gonna put the whole thing, it's a lot. You can put sugar, you can put a little bit of agave, you can put honey, depending on whatever sweetening agent that you believe in, go ahead and use that. I'm just gonna break this really quickly. And I will be adding half of this, okay? So the flavor profile of this chutney is salty, sweet, sour, and tangy. Now for the sour agent, we are going to use lemon. If you have lemon, you can use lemon. If you have, um, Tamarind, you can use that. So I'm just going to squeeze the lemon right in here. If you have dry mango powder, you can use that. If you have chaat masala, you can use that. If you don't have anything and you have this store-bought bottle of lemon juice or lime juice, use that. If you don't have that and you have pomegranate powder, use that. And if you don't have that, then you know what? Take my phone number, call me, because I will have to bring it to your house once this craziness is over. <laughs> Yeah, my sense of humor is crazy sometimes. <laughs> all right. So that's as far as all the materials go. And then a little bit of salt. I like to put Himalayan pink salt, but unfortunately I just do not have any more Himalayan salt in my house. So I'm going to put a little bit. I'll put some red chili powder. Now most of the time what happens is that the liquid from the lemon is enough to work with. But my blender is a little retarded, so it needs extra help. So I'm going to put a little bit of water. Okay, and I had a cut in my hand, which is now burning from squeezing the lemon. Be careful, baby, when you work in the kitchen. Okay. You got to keep an eye on this, okay? So whenever you're multitasking, it's like being a mom. Just keep an eye on everything. All right, so we're going to blitz this thing. And I have my trusty spatula, my silicone spatula, which helps me to scrape down the sides. <coughs> oh my God, that one chili was too hot. Um, and I'm going to add a little more water because it needs some help. Okay, that's that. Back to what we were doing before. If you're trying
trying out any of the recipes that I'm sharing, do give me a shout out. I would love to see these in action or when you make it, you can always tag me on Instagram. Hashtag Queen's Curry Kitchen. Okay, now you can see this is kind of a little grainy. You see how grainy it is? So I'm going to give it one more blitz. If you want to add an avocado, you can do that. At this point, it'll be nice and creamy. If you want to add some chickpeas, you can do that. Be like a cilantro hummus. If you want to add some yogurt, you can do that. It makes it nice and creamy. If you want to add some cashew nuts, if you want to add some peanuts, there's so many variations that you can do to this recipe. So just be mindful to add the water gradually. You don't want to add too much water and then have everything flooded. Alrighty, this is looking good. Now in the restaurants, when you eat them, they usually have a lot of uh, food coloring in them. So they do add the green food coloring. If you have mint at home and a lot of a uh, lot of places it's already spring so if you have some mint growing in your backyard you might want to add it but add the mint all the way in the very end because the blades which are made of steel and the heat of the machine actually blacken the mint so be very careful when you make mint chutney you don't want to add it too early okay now i'm going to take it out and show you what it looks like okay You can still see that it's pretty watery. I might add some coconut to this. Um, just some frozen desiccated coconut or something so that it'll soak up all the liquid. I don't know, I'll see. But this is how green it looks without the addition of any food coloring or anything, right? And you can add, some people like to add fresh, some people like to add a green tomato. So everybody kind of does their own little spin on it. And some people also like to add a tempering to this. So it's all up to you how you want to do it. That's your green chutney. Enjoy it with your kebabs. Enjoy it with your appetizers, your pakoras. We've done so many recipes together in which you can actually use the green chutney. Okay, I'm going to bring your attention back to this. Now that the onions are somewhat done, I'm going to add the ginger and garlic. This is about eight cloves of garlic and a knob of ginger that I just grated on my microplane. You can also use your food processor or blender to do that. And we're going to give it a saute. Now, restaurant style karai paneer is really literally just loaded with butter. But we are not going that route at all. Um... So that's where we are. I'm just going to give it a stir. I unplugged it somewhere. Just microwave it. Okay, so we're not going to do a butter laden anything. And we don't want this to be too brown. Because remember we were saving, we're going to save half of this for our lentil. For the mung bean tempering. So as soon as the onions and garlic gets cooked, we're going to... Take them out and split it in half, save some for our mung bean tempering, and then continue with the paneer dish. Okay, I'm also going to get started on the gourd recipe because I know we have a lot to do. I'm cooking for six today. So we have a lot to do. I'm going to get started on that, and you guys will keep an eye on this for me. Okay, I'm making it in the Instapot only because it's easier to plug it in here and bring it to you. But whatever I'm doing here, you can do it in an electric pressure cooker, you can do it in a wok, you can do it in a pan. It's all very much possible. All right, so we're jumping into our next recipe. I will put this to heat up a little bit. I'm going to keep an eye on this. You definitely don't want anything to be sticking to the bottom. And the time is coming when I might want to remove some. But before I do that, I will add some fresh tomatoes to this. So for the paneer dish, mostly we would use canned tomatoes or tomato puree. Okay? 
but because I have tomatoes in abundance and I really don't know what to do with it and I don't want them to go to waste, I'm going to use a combination of both. Okay. So this will saute. This immediately brings the temperature down. And at this point, we should always add our salt for the entire recipe so that it will help the tomatoes to break down. Some red chili powder, some turmeric, coriander powder, and garam masala. Now remember, this is also the tempering for the dal, okay? So we're just trying to put in and give them enough time to cook up nicely. This is going to need a few minutes. I'm also going to help it along by adding a little bit of, this is just good old regular and tomato puree. I'm going to add a spoon of that. And I'm going to let it cook. This tempering or this sauce base needs to cook up till all the oil floats on top. So it's going to be a hot minute. Alrighty. Now, time for this one. We are going to add some oil. Now this is the simplest recipe because it only calls for very limited ingredients. We are going to add tomatoes, we're going to add cumin, and we are going to add some esophatida, which is actually the flavoring agent in this dish. Nothing complicated, no rocket science, just easy peasy Japanese. Easy peasy Indian. So here I have it. I took my bottle gourd and I've cut it into small pieces. It's a great recipe for somebody who's fasting and is not doing garlic or not doing onions. This is a great recipe for somebody like that. It's also great when we have limited ingredients. We don't want to put everything in one dish so you can really preserve your produce and grocery and stretch it out a little bit in this time of lockdown. So nobody from your family has to step out every day all right so this is nice and hot i'm going to add esophatida which is also hing and i'm going to give it a little zhuzh. what a technical term right zhuzh. i will add some cumin seeds which is my favorite and because my husband was messing around with the masala box, there's some turmeric in the cumin seeds. <laughs> That's fine. And all these fresh onions, duh. they're a little ripe. So they actually are releasing a lot of moisture right now. And I'm just gonna let that do its thing. But I will remember to put all my salt for the entire dish into here right now to help the tomatoes to break down okay and i will give it a little hint of tomato puree i just feel like store-bought tomato puree is um a little too tart but it just helps to you know build the color in your dish and sometimes when you're not sure of whether you're going to get fresh tomatoes or not it's good to use a combination of both so you can stretch out your fresh produce Okay, now you see this is coming along really well. I've already cut up my bottle gourd and I have these. So this is the surprise that I'm going to add to this dish. Instead of adding potatoes to every stir fry or every dish, like it is um, a very common practice in the North Indian cuisine, I'm actually adding these and these are lentil dumplings and you can see they are rock hard okay they're solid they're homemade and one of these days i will show you how to make them at home this is a great way to preserve your food and they're this these are made from yellow mung beans and uh, it's been rainy and it's not so sunny nowadays but i guess once we have two or three days of guaranteed sun i will definitely show you how to make these at home and store them in your pantry for up to a year so these are really good and what I will do is once I'm done with sauteing the tomatoes, I will create the base for this curry and I will put everything including this. I'm not going to fry it. I will put this in here and then I will allow it to simmer and it will be nice and soft. Okay. 
Hey, let's see. There are some new people joining us. Ashima Gupta is in the house. Hey, Ashima and Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Welcome, welcome. We just finished doing a green cilantro chutney. We are doing a karai paneer in this pan and we're doing a bottle gourd with lentil dumplings in this. So yes, we're going to try to do a lot today. Okay, now you can see this is coming together really beautifully. All the moisture is drying up. You just have to keep stirring it. Same thing here, the tomatoes are releasing a lot of moisture and you just have to let them do that. Now for an additional depth of flavor to your tomato based curries, what you can do is, remember the green chutney that we just made? You can actually add maybe just two teaspoons of this just to give it a nice cilantro-y flavor. I cannot tell you how good it feels when it goes and marries into the tartness of the tomatoes and the cilantro. It's really a match made in heaven. If you have curry leaves at home, it would be a good idea to add them at this point. I don't have any more, so that's my story. But if you have them, by all means, put your curry leaves into your tomato-based gravies. It really is a great idea. Okay, so this is definitely coming along. Okay, now to this I'm going to add an ingredient that you're already familiar with. Remember my restaurant style gravy that we had made and frozen, the curry base? That's what we're going to add. That's the thing that gives your karai paneer that flourish, okay? And there's no harm if a little bit of it goes into the dal as well. So we're going to roast, fry, saute, whatever you want to call it, all of these together. And if you remember, this had all the whole spices like the, the cloves, the cinnamon, the cardamom, the bay leaf. This had all of that. So now that it's actually going to work together, it's going to become a nice homogenous paste. And it will be a great base for our paneer dish. Okay, now this is Indian cooking in real time. Okay, if I didn't have to talk to you, it would probably go a lot faster. But here I am, right? The aroma is coming from this with the combination of the asafoetida, the creaminess and the tanginess of the potatoes, and of course the cilantro, the fresh cilantro that we had just made chutney and we put it in here. It's absolutely heavenly. Nothing compares. I have not um, had lunch yet, so I am totally starving. But if you were here, I would be very happy to feed you. Okie doke. This is coming along. This burner is a little slow and even though it's on full, it still takes a while because it doesn't heat the sides of the wok. It basically just concentrates all the heat in the middle. So it is what it is, honey. I'm trying. Okay. If you've been trying out any of the recipes, give me a shout out. If you want to sign up for any of the classes, you can always leave me a message. There are a few classes coming up. There is a master class for Indian breads. There is a master class for rice. It's called Basmati like a pro and these are all happening in the month of May. And then there are two classes called Cook for Mom where you'll be cooking an entire meal for your mom with me. So you can sign up for any of these. If you would like a schedule of when these classes are happening, just send me a message or um, just drop a comment and I'll be happy to send you the schedule so you can sign up. And don't forget, we are also doing the online shopping spree, which is tomorrow evening on my Facebook page. I will be live. You can see all the products. You can preview a lot of things. You can see some demonstrations. And you can decide if you want to order anything for Mother's Day. It's almost here before you know it. So you can do the spice box for your mom. You can do the spice blends for your mom. You can do the book for your sister-in-law, for your sister, for your wife. Whoever's into cooking, I think there's a gift for every foodie out there. Okay, so these tomatoes are just super juicy and so the liquid is taking its own sweet time to evaporate. I'm gonna keep stirring this. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of this so that I can use it for my lentils. going to quick cook this down okay that's good enough in a little while i will take you over to my lentil 
boiled so you can see what they look like after they're boiled. Now this is actually releasing the oil and it's coming to the top. So it's doing really well. If you do it on the stove top, of course it happens a lot faster because you can control the intensity of the flame. So basically, if you took a master class with gravies, you'd actually be learning these two kind of sauces. I teach the sauces first and then I teach the recipes around the sauces. So this is an onion tomato sauce, like a tikka masala sauce. This, would, this is how it starts. And then this is a tomato based sauce. So you would be learning all the sauces and all the different gravies um, the curry bases, and then there is a spinach based sauce, there's a boiled onion and cashew sauce. You'd be learning all those in the curry master class. So if you have a lot of time on your hands and you always wanted to up your skills, I would certainly say take that class. If you're already at an intermediate level and you know a lot of Indian cooking, you can do my fusion class, which is Lebanese, um, Indian, Chinese, and also Indian Tex Mex. So those are three options that I'm offering. All of this is happening. So if you want any information, you can always hit me up or leave me a message and I will give you the information. Okay, so now you can see this is almost practically dry and the aromas are really building up as the tomatoes are thickening. It's releasing a nice sweet aroma. To this, I'm going to add all of my bottle guard. And I will add these dumplings. Some people like to just shallow fry these dump these lentil dumplings. I don't like to do that. I just feel like I like them soft instead of crunchy in my curry. So I don't like to fry it. Give it a good stir. And then come back in with some water. We are going to add water. This is going to be a liquid curry dish. It's not a stir fry. So we definitely need some liquid. We are totally skipping potatoes in this dish just to keep it healthy and not be tempted to put potatoes in every as an accompaniment. The reason potatoes are added is just to give it a little textural difference. And I feel like we can do that with so many other things except potato. All right, so that's how watery this needs to be. Everything is raw right now. I'm going to check for seasoning. I think it needs a little more salt, which I'm going to add right now. And it also could use a little heat. I'm going to add some red chili powder and some Kitchen King, which is my absolutely favorite, favorite spice. I'm going to add some coriander powder. That's about it. Now this is going to get closed up and we will cook it. So I'm going to cancel the thing and I will put it on a different setting. There you go. I close this and it's going to go in manual for about seven minutes. I will put, put pictures of everything that we are making so that you don't feel like, oh my God, I didn't get to see the big reveal. So if you follow me on Instagram, if you follow me on Facebook, you will be able to see all of that. My Instagram page is Queen's Curry Kitchen and so is the Facebook page. It's the same name. I just added a little bit of water to help it along. You can see this is coming along really nice. If you have a lot of oil that you've added to this by now, you wouldn't need the help of any water. But I just try not to be excessive with the oil. So we're going to fry this out or whatever, cook it out. And at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and add my bell peppers. I'm gonna add the onion petals. All of these go in together. Some ginger juliennes. Give it a toss. Cover it so it can cook a little bit. I'm also going to add 
Ta-da! The Magic Spice, which is the stir-fry curry blend. You can use it for any of your stir-fry vegetables. It has everything. You won't need any spices to go in there except for salt to taste. So this is the curry mix. I'm going to add all of this and I'm going to save just a little bit to add all the way in the end. These spices have no preservatives. They have no MSG and they're always freshly ground. So when you place an order, you get a fresh batch whenever that is that you're placing your order. Okay. Oh, that smells so good. This already has mango powder. It has fennel. It has coriander seeds. It has cumin seeds that have been roasted and ground. It's really the one spice fits all kind of a scenario. I'm going to really let, leave it to cook and check for seasoning. Yes, it does need a little salt. It's nice and tart. Personally, some people like this a little more tomatoey, but I think that it just, the first taste that hits you should be the cumin, the ginger, the cilantro, the coriander leaf, the coriander seeds, and not the tartness of the tomato. I think it kills you from appreciating what else is in the dish. Okay, so these two are happening. I'm going to now take you over to where we are making our dal, our lentil dish. Hi, Marlene, how are you today? Oh my God, so good to see you. All right, so here we are. Uh, let me, okay, so here we are. I'm gonna turn the light on so you can get a better sense of this. This is again my Instapot. I don't know what I would do without it. I'm gonna pull it forward a little bit so you can see. So these are my green mung beans and I have boiled them with salt and turmeric. You can see I've done these before as well. So I'm just going to give it a nice mix. So it has absorbed all the water. I did not soak my beans beforehand. I put it directly into my instant pot or electric pressure cooker and I hit the bean setting. So I'm just going to give it a little whisk. If you have a whisk at home, you can use that. I use the ladle because it helps me to mash some of the grains against the wall of the pressure cooker. I'm going to do that. Now, you remember this thing that we made? Yeah, the, the half of the tempering that we snuck out <laughs> from when we were making the paneer dish. Okay, so this is it. We are going to blend that in. And we are going to add our restaurant style just a ladle full that would be really nice i'm also going to add water and bring this to a boil and i will finish it off with some ginger juliennes some garam masala and some cilantro okay so the water goes in it all depends on how thick you want your dal to be. If you're going to use it with rice, then you definitely want it a little more runny. And if you're going to serve it with any kind of bread, or if you want to churn it in your blender and use it like a soup, by all means, you can do that. Once it's completely well blended, you can always get a stick blender and run this together so that you will get the desired texture of soup. I'm going to add a little more water here. And then I will close this back up. I will check for seasoning. If you can, try to add hot water. Don't, don't add cold water to your Indian curries. While, when it's already tempered and everything, just try to add. Yep, the salt is perfect. I think it needs just a little bit of salt. And I'm probably going to have to garnish with a little lemon juice because it needs that little kick. Okay, so this is going to go back. It's almost ready to eat it just needs to be boiled so i'm going to put it on my manual setting for about five minutes four is fine too and i'll be done bringing you back to the paneer this is really roasting away you can see all the stuff that's happening at the bottom so i'm going to keep adding a little bit of oil and or water, whatever you want to do, and deglaze this pan. And the last thing that I will add will be the paneer. 
Along with that, I'm going to add half a cup of water and cover this so that it will have that deep, rich taste. And just before I remove it from the flame, I will be adding the dry fenugreek herb to give it that classic restaurant flavor. So I hope you liked what you saw. As always, I appreciate you coming here and joining me with me in my kitchen. You have no idea how boring it can get sometimes when you can't get out, when you can't meet your favorite people. But you know what? It's such a pleasure to hang out with all of you. So thank you for joining me. I greatly appreciate it. Be blissful, be flavorful, be safe. I'm sending a lot of prayers and a lot of hugs for the safety and protection of your family. Take good care of yourself at this time. It will pass. But thank you again for supporting the Queen's Curry Kitchen. I hope you will give these recipes a try. Thanks again. I will see you again tomorrow in another one. Bye now.